first session within the team, uh, SA EU cohesion policy. My name is Martin Putney, and it's my pleasure, together with my colleague Ursula Ursula Tessot from Poland, to co-chair this session. I believe you are not hungry because it's after lunch, but you are still eager to discuss the things and issues related to SEA and, and cohesion policy. Uh, when we were thinking about the, what, what should be the purpose and the aim of the session, we crafted, so to say, maybe a bit challenging, challenging aim for this team, because we hope that the, the discussions within the team should result in some recommendations for efficient application of SEA for the next programming period, which should start in 2014. Of course, there is a link to overall conference topics, but we should have in mind that uh, we are discussing the specific types of programs, this means uh, national development plans and operational programs, and the SEA for these programs. So we should, we should address these three questions in our further discussions. Uh, as you know from the program, uh, the, 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 op the entire team consists from four sessions. And we start now with the first session, which is a panel discussion. And the aim of this session is to define a set of key issues and uh, key questions which should be addressed and discussed in further sessions within the, within the team. And the last session in this team tomorrow before lunch should be focused on working on these key issues, sitting in the groups and trying to formulate some specific recommendations for better for better and more efficient SEA practice for next programming period. <coughs> so let me introduce briefly, I'm very glad that I may invite here the panel members. And starting from my left, uh, Mr. Jorgos Kremlis, from, from director from the European Commission, responsible for for SEA and EIA. And, then, cohesion and cohesion policy, of course. Then Mr. Mr. Gordon McLaren, chief executive from uh, from Asset Company from Scotland. Then I have to say that unfortunately, Mr. Uh, Mr. Brown, the deputy minister uh, from the Ministry for Asian Development from the Czech Republic, uh, has to who has been announced uh, in the program has to has to go to Poland today. I don't know what you're organizing there, but obviously it's uh, more important than our conference here, which is unbelievable. But we have more than adequate uh, replacement here. Uh, we have here Mr. Vichumpela, who is the Director of the Department of uh, Coordination of National Strategic Reference Framework. So he is deeply involved in the cohesion policy coordination and stuff around. And we have here also two practitioners, SEA practitioners. First, Moisa Hrabar, she is a senior consultant from OICOS from Slovenia. And Mr. Witold Bolestin from University of Maria we asked before uh, uh, we asked each of the panel members to briefly present uh, his or her view on the key issues and key questions to be further addressed in this team. But before we start to do so, I would like to let me briefly go through these these issues. So, first question is: What should be the role of SA in preparation of structured funds programs? Uh, you you know that you may find a number of definitions what should be SCA, what it should be about, and what is its primary role. But is it is it the same for operation programs, or, or are there any other any other aspects which should be which should be promoted by by SCA? Could, for example, the SCA for operation programs be responsible for a certain part of programming, for example, to define environmental objectives at the country level, environmental measures uh, through SCA, or for example, the parts of some operation programs, like operation programs for transport or industry, could environmental objectives, measures of these programs be identified through SCA, or could SCA take responsibility for overall coordination of consultation process, which is uh, is a part of preparation of operation programs. The question is whether it should be a role of SCA, whether it would be acceptable by, for res by responsible authorities, by implementing agencies, etc. 
when we are talking about the role of SEA, which should SEA have, uh, we should also ask whether what was the role of SEA in, in, in the current programming period when the SEA was done for, for operational programs in 2005-2006. So are there any examples of successful SEAs which, uh, which contributed to more green programs or contributed to better programming procedure? And would be definitely interesting to discuss what are the key success factors. Is it the good coordination between SE and the programming process? Is it the good consultation? Is it about the data availability, etc., etc.? And also, what are the main obstacles in in SEAs for current operational programs? Uh, there is definitely an issue uh, regarding the preparation of operational programs, there is an issue of ex-ante evaluation because uh, from, again, from, uh, from definition of ex-ante evaluation it's obvious that there might be certain overlaps uh, between ex-ante evaluation and SEA process if these processes are not well coordinated. So, for example, they might analyze the similar issues, they might consult with the similar stakeholders. So how to avoid these overlaps and what practical recommendations can be given to support more efficient efficient practice and cooperation between ex-ante and, and SEA evaluation. Can it be, for example, conducted as a, as a one process or what, what should be done? Uh, it, it was mentioned in the morning plenary session that there are certain key issues which should be promoted uh, through SCA in general. So we should discuss what are the key issues relevant for, for European Union at, in general or whether there are some key issues specific for countries or regions. Is it green economy? Uh, is it uh, eco-innovation or environmental technologies? What, what are the other issues to be specifically promoted by SCA for, for operation programs? Uh, yeah. It's mentioned here, climate change adaptation, any other, any other tips will be appreciated. Uh, since the midterm reviews uh, were done last year, or yeah, last year, so it would be also interesting to, to see whether there are some interesting recommendations towards the better, better SEA practice. And uh, since SEA is working with the plans and, and the programs, and it estimates the potential future impacts and future evolution, it, it strongly depends on how the results and recommendations given by SCA are used when implementing the operation programs. Well, programs in general, but we are talking about operation programs. So we'd like to know the examples which SCA outcomes, indicators, environmental criteria, some further specification of conditions for project, project implementation and construction, which outcomes have been widely accepted or which one have been refused or, or followed with difficulties. So what is the view of especially of implementing agencies and, and, and programming agencies regarding the usefulness of SEA outcomes and especially in terms of uh, project preparation and implementation. So this is in brief the set of uh, the basic set of key issues we should we should discuss here. <coughs> but of course, our panel members as well as you it would be great if you if you come up with some other issues, other questions, which will be addressed in in further sections. Are there any immediate questions or reactions? If if not, so I would like to ask Mr. Kremlitz to briefly present his, his view. Yeah. Let me just close it. <coughs> Can I do from here? Nothing? Or I have yeah, it's, it's up to from you. Here it's yeah, it's connected. No, 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 it's not connected. Oh. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Martin. Um, I think that the questions that you have uh, identified are the key questions for our discussion. 
and I think that you have even went further than what I was expecting in terms of questions to be asked, which is really a very good thing. Now, uh, I would like to share with you our experience as regards the current uh, program in Syria, and uh, the SGA is that uh, we have had the possibility to uh, assess in the context of the current programming period. And of course, we need uh, to address more what will happen in the next programming period. Uh, some key questions have already been raised by Martin in that respect. <coughs> As the role of the SDA, and I would say it is, its very existence will be once again a challenge uh, in the next programming period, and this is why we need uh, to agree amongst us on how best we feel the SCA should apply for the next uh, programming period, the post uh, 20. Now, in the current uh, programming uh, period, uh, as I mentioned this morning, it was agreed with uh, DG Regio, that is the DG co-financing the cohesion policy, and it was shared with the member states that the conditions of the SCA directive are fulfilled for the level of the operational program. I said this morning that Austria has the best, uh, the best practice uh, carried out uh, an SCA for the level of the national strategic reference framework, uh, the voluntary. SCA. Uh, it is a good thing that we would like also to see for the next programming period. Uh, I will say more for the next programming period in a while, but what we have asked the member states to produce for the OPs that were setting the framework for future development of stems, in other words, that were covering projects that will have to undergo EAEAs at the project level, was that we requested from the member states to have the non-technical summary. Uh, sometimes the summary was technical, as I mentioned this morning, that was one of the problems that we identified. <coughs> the statement foreseen under Article 9.1, which summarizes how the environmental considerations and the opinions expressed have been taken into account during the public consultation and the consultation of the environmental authorities, and the description of the measures decided for sending the monitoring foreseen in Article 9.1c uh, and Article 10. Okay. And uh, as an additional document, uh, we uh, were requesting the member states to produce the information on the consultations with the public and the environmental authorities who had been consulted, how they were informed, the time available for the responses, and uh, the uh, IT means or other means to uh, gather the information. So these were the documents that we wanted uh, to have in order to find out that uh, an SCA was, uh, was properly uh, carried out. Now, our findings, and I mentioned also this a little bit uh, this morning uh, on the environmental report and the non-technical summary, um, was that the report did not cover often all issues in Annex 1, particularly the alternatives and the zero option. There was a discussion during this morning's session on this. We do believe that this is extremely important, especially for the new uh, OPs, especially for the transport OPs, the environment OPs, where the alternatives are extremely important as regards the location of the projects, the routing, the alignment of the motorways, etc., etc. And uh, we do believe that this should be one of the key messages that this has to be addressed absolutely in uh, the strategic environmental assessment. Now, parts of the OP were not covered by the SCA. For instance, the indicative list of the major projects. As you know, the indicative list is part of the OP. So it wouldn't make sense that you address the OP alone without the indicative list because the indicative list are those for which uh, development consent will be sought later on and therefore 
How can you assess the cumulative effect of these projects being part of the OP if you simply assess the OP at a very theoretical level, another shortcoming identified? The insufficient consideration of the Natura 2000 sites was another point, uh, as we still had at the time gray areas and uh, litigation with member states on uh, the extent of the sites to be designated either SPAs or PACIs. Mm -hmm. Extremely important, again, to avoid problems downstream at the project level. Uh, what I wanted to tell you is that now that the mapping of the Natura 2000 is almost there, it is very easy to project uh, your, uh, your SCA and your project, for instance, if you have a network of motorways, on this map and see where this map and the projects cover or can affect Natura 2000 sites and how this can be avoided or how can you choose the parts of crossing, for instance, a Natura 2000 site in, in a less uh, difficult uh, part uh, where, for instance, you don't have uh, uh, priority species, etc., etc. And the impacts were not always uh, quantified. The non-technical summaries were often of poor quality, not giving the information uh, from Annex 1. Uh, sometimes uh, it was simply a formal posting, go to page uh, X, etc. Uh, Great. In some cases, no summary uh, at uh, the public uh, consultation was available. Now, uh, for the consultations, we received some complaints that the environmental authorities were not properly consulted on the content and or the results of the SCA process. Okay, this morning I said that we were happy that the environmental authorities were involved. Nothing is perfect in this world. <laughs> They are normally involved, but uh, in some cases we would have wished them to be more involved, especially at the level of the of the OPs where a lot of amounts are at stake and where projects have to be uh, co-financed downstream, where the environmental authorities need to help the managing authorities to find the solution. So it's better to be proactive and work upstream than work at the level of the project uh, in order to find the solutions. Uh, and it was not clear if the views of the environmental authorities were always taken <coughs> into consideration, which is uh, for us extremely important that the environmental authorities are our partners. Now, uh, for the consultations of the public, the time frames were different from member state to member state. Sometimes the time frame for the consultation was not sufficient. In some member states, the participation was, was limited probably people uh, feel that an OP is something which is in a very high level, which does not uh, concern them in their uh, daily life uh, concerns, unless there is an NIMBY uh, dimension which, is, uh, uh, which can be perceived. The consultation uh, often was only posted uh, on the web, and therefore it was difficult for the citizens to know that there is something ongoing, uh, and uh, the consultation must be on both the SPA the report uh, and, uh, and the OPs, etc. So the scope of the consultation was not very clear everywhere. Uh, on the monitoring, we have found out that significant impacts were not always clearly identified, which is important, because what you need to monitor is a significant impact. And uh, what we should probably stress once again is that the life cycle of the SCA does not end with the production of the SCA. It is an open life cycle that needs monitoring of what was monitored and needs to be uh, reviewed, revisited, and possibly amended should we find out that the monitoring, especially of the significant effects, leads to some situations that that have to be remedied subsequently. The monitoring measures were not clearly identified, and uh, that was also linked uh, to transposition uh, problems and to conformity problems with other environmental directives. Uh, in some member states, there were indicators on uh, uh, climate. Uh, 
this is the case of the French uh, carbon neutrality uh, approach that was followed for the EOP. And of course, this is something that will come in the current programming uh, period. Uh, I guess the uh, digital Clima will ask for some kind of uh, climate proofing of the of the OP of the OPs, and uh, possibly uh, we should ask for some kind of biodiversity proofing. Again, uh, the studies that we have commissioned currently on the SCA climate and biodiversity will enlighten us more. But what is clear is that in the scope of the SCAs, this consideration should be there. And I would like to add uh, resource efficiency. And as uh, um, the SWOT analysis this morning suggested, uh, no, it was the other colleague, green infrastructures should also be there, as these are new ideas where SEAs uh, should uh, probably be carried out. The question is whether there is a legal basis for an SEA to be carried out, as this is a legal requirement that it has to be foreseen in a piece of law unless it is done on a voluntary basis. And our approach is to encourage member states to do SEAs on a voluntary basis in order to uh, absorb EU funds uh, much more easy and to have less problems downstream at the level of, of the EIA. Now, for the good practice elements, the early start of the SCA in some member states was a good thing, and I think one of the conclusions to draw is that the SCAs should start as early as possible in order to assess all the uh, environmental impacts, uh, and possibly to have a parallel development of the EOP and the SCA as the SCA findings have to feed into the EOP. Uh, the review of the OP the SCA demonstrated negative environmental impacts. Otherwise, doing some kind of exposed SCA for window dressing purposes doesn't serve any purpose. The consultation of the partners and the partnership should be as open as possible, on time, dialogue between the OP and the SCA developers, uh, developers, I mean the competent authorities responsible for the SCA, and uh, to have a structured consultation where all the stakeholders should be uh, present. Uh, then, as regards the environmental commitment, we should fully environment proof the program as France did. But I mean, that was one practice. Uh, there were other practices in other member states. And uh, it is important to have this proofing. Um, and uh, also to have some. Uh, environment proofing project selection criteria in order to have an informed SCA as the SCA will contain projects and therefore we need to be coherent and consistent with what we will include in the SCA and of course the specific SCA monitoring measures. Now uh, some key issues, the timing, I mentioned this already, parallel SCA UP. Uh, increased capacity of the environmental authorities to play an important role and we really want to help the environmental authorities and if we can do something in increasing their role and make it more visible in this process as they are not driving the process we will certainly do it. The structured approach that I mentioned before is necessary. Monitoring indicators should be there the monitoring should continue during the whole life of the OP implementation and this should be made clear within the OP and uh, the SCA and the links between the two. Uh, and of course on the environmental commitment, we need the commitment to sustainable development to greening the, the OP. The budget allocation for certain environmental authorities to priorities to be clear. The environmental project selection criteria on the specific projects that will be part of the EP for which development consent will be sold, and the staff to support the environmental integration. Uh, I should tell you that the network that we have, the EMEA MA network, the network of the environmental and managing authorities that we will meet, uh, we meet in on Brussels on, on the 4th of October. Some of you will be present, is now working, including on 
preparing the next programming period in that respect. <coughs> we will be happy to have the, the findings and the recommendations of this workshop on that. Now, let's go to the future now, which is important. For the future, we will have a common strategic framework. So no NSRF anymore. It will be a common strategic uh, uh, framework. Uh, in which will be, for which there will be a proposal for the Commission. We don't know yet what will be the form of the common strategic framework. It's not in the overhead. Uh, then we will have a partnership contract where the needs of the common strategic framework will be spelled uh, and made more concrete for each member state. And then we will have operational programs that will be uh, vertical operational programs. So what is sure? is that for the level of the operational programs, SCAs will be required as the operational programs will be the same as the ones we are having now. And therefore, on this, there is no doubt that SCAs will have to be carried out. Now, for the partnership contract, which is something between the NSRF that we have now and a more selective approach, more concrete, I would say, something in between, some member states, if they so wish, uh, can carry out uh, SCAs as, uh, as a good practice. Of course, we need to see in the new regulations what will be the shape, legally speaking, of the partnership contract, because if we find out that the conditions of the SCA are fulfilled, an SCA will have to, uh, to, be, to be carried out. Now, uh, in relation to what Martin has mentioned before, the current drafts that are in the inter-service consultation within the Commission, as we need first to agree amongst us, and I must tell you that a lot of DGs have already issued negative opinions, uh, show that there is an exante uh, evaluation, assessment, uh, which refers also to the environment. So what is currently in the draft regulations is an evaluation having a lot of pillars, amongst which the environmental pillar that refers to the questions that Martin has asked. Now, our line, and in that respect, your words, your work and reflection will be interesting, is that in any case, the SCA applies on its own merits. So for the OPs, whether we mention this in the general provision reg regulation or not, an SCA will have to be carried out. The question in practical terms is, I refer again to Martin, will the SCA be part of the ex-ante evaluation and constitute the environmental pillar of this evaluation, or will it be carried out uh, separately uh, to complement the exercise? I do believe that on this we need your uh, likes uh, and your, uh, your, your feedback. Uh, the subsidiarity approach could suggest that we leave this to the member states find out whether they want to do it within the, uh, the ex-ante evaluation. What is important is that the SEA is not watered down within an ex-ante evaluation that will be uh, very broad uh, with uh, social, economic, uh, and other impacts that uh, have to be considered. Uh, so in that sense, we would have preferred uh, a self-standing SCA that is more visible, that can be better organized and also controlled and monitored, and not watered down. But once again, this is to be considered by each member state. Unless we can agree on a good practice, we will discuss this within the EMEA, MA network to find out what will be done. Currently, uh, we have the modification of the OPs. I referred to this uh, thoroughly this morning. I don't think we need to, to repeat uh, this. Uh, we would like this time to have a better quality of SCAs because as I mentioned before, 
the SPAs were uneven depending on the member state and depending on the SCA. I mean, the transport for B was has undergone a different SCA than the environment of B, etc. Uh, and then uh, the, the new challenges will have to be addressed. That was all. Thank you. Thank you very much.